Welcome back guys. So I finally got my hands on the Sega Astro City Mini, Sega's latest in their line of miniature versions of gaming systems that they've made before. This one is purely arcade games. So I did order this plus two additional game pads for the console. There's an arcade stick they made as well, but it's just not in the budget at this moment. So I had to cancel that, but maybe at a later date, I'll pick it up. But I figured for now, this is gonna be fine. So I did pay with both the console and two controllers. It was a little over $200 shipped to the US. You know, not bad, but you know, a lot of times these classic mini consoles, they do go on sale over time. But with this being a Japanese exclusive, I jumped on it. I, I had to find out if this thing was worth a damn. When they unveiled all the 37 games that are included on this thing, kind of started losing a little bit of interest but there's definitely some heavy hitters on this thing. I was just hoping there'd be more surprises. So this controller here, uh, I like the way it looks, but overall it does kind of have a cheap feel to it. The D-pad has that kind of Saturn Genesis style D-pad feel to it, but at the same time, it just, I don't know how to explain it. It just feels a little cheap, including the buttons on there. Doesn't feel the worst that I've ever, you know, held in my grubby little mitts, you know what I mean? but a little disappointed in the way the controller feels, but we'll have to find out after actually using it, right? So here we go. I wasn't sure what was in this box at first. I didn't realize they actually gave you some damn cables with this thing. So you do get in this little box here, an HDMI cable and a USB power supply cable. Uh, no power brick or anything like that. There is no internal battery on this. It's very similar to like the Neo Geo Mini where you're gonna have to plug this thing into something else. Would have been nice if there's a rechargeable battery with it, but I, I get it, I guess. Just kind of wish they would have went a little extra mile there. This little insert, I guess, just some fluff to keep the console from moving, nothing in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. It's got a little bit of, a little heft to it. A little, little fat dude, as far as the weight goes. And it looks freaking amazing. I don't even know if, you know, being on camera with this, if it does it justice, but this thing looks awesome. The plastic feels really nice. Like it's not an overly cheap build here. You got your little power switch on the back. HDMI, you plug this thing in the HDMI. We'll go ahead and test that out in a moment as well. You got two USBs. Those are specifically for player one, player two. Then you have a headphone jack and your power port. So. What I wanted to do real quick was just compare the size to the uh, Neo Geo Mini, which, you know, a lot of people have bought the Neo Geo Minis. They've gone on sale like drastically over the past couple years. Now, they're not the worst devices, but wasn't exactly what people were hoping for, right? But looking at it, definitely the Astro City Mini is a better like build as far as the quality goes. It really looks like an Astro City arcade cabinet. So that's a really cool thing. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in and test it real quick. Check out the game list, play a handful of games, test out the controller, plug it into a monitor, see what the output looks like. But overall the buttons and the little stick on this device, clicky sticks, not hard to make for Sega apparently, or Sega toys anyway. But there you go. I definitely like the feel of this better than the Neo Geo Mini. So let's uh, plug that power in. I do have a little battery pack, so let's go ahead and get that going, then start playing some games. Let's do it. Okay, so here we go. Let's power this thing on, see what to do here. Oh wait, my battery turned off. There we go. Nice, the little light glows on the top. Sega. So I know people are gonna complain, you didn't peel the, uh, the thing off. You know what, I wasn't gonna peel it, but we're gonna go ahead and peel it. There we go. a little dust down there. Okay, so if we hit the coin button, we go into our language options and whatnot. I already turned this on once and it prompted me, what language do you wanna use? Um, so they have English and you know a few other languages there. But very nice, we, we have English. Brightness, you can go ahead and turn that up and down. Volume, turn that up and down. Screen settings, you have analog display or default. So analog display looks like it has scan lines. Let me zoom up a bit. We'll leave it to default. What else was there? Wallpaper settings. 
you have different um, bezels, it looks like. And then reset the factory default settings. Let's go ahead and take a look through the game list real quick. Uh, we'll start at Poyo Poyo, Dark Edge, Tantar. And the one cool thing I noticed, like you could cycle through the different screens there, little screenshots. Virtual Fighter, Stack Columns. You have two save states per game, it looks like. Poyo Poyo 2, Dotatori Kun. That looks pretty boring. Flicky. Sega Ninja, I actually really like this game. My Hero, My Hero Academia, what? Space Harrier, oh my god, love Space Harrier. Fantasy Zone, classic. Wonder Boy, one of my favorites. This, this stick is like really responsive. Feels very nice. Quartet 2. Alex Kidd with Stella Lost Stars. Alien Syndrome, Wonder Boy and Monster Land. The Shinobis, Sonic Boom! It's a little uh, vertical shooter. Altered Beast, another classic. Scramble Spirits, Wonder Boy 3, Monster Lair. Game Ground, Crackdown. Go Nax, Cyber Police, E-SWAT. And I know a lot of these games are, you know, they have home conversions, but these are all the arcade ports. That's why, um, or the original arcade version. That's why we got a coin button instead of a select button on both the unit and on the uh, the controller here. Alien Storm, Columns, Bonanza Bros, Columns 2. Way too many Columns games. Thunder Force, AC, Air Conditioning, Rad Mobile. That looks interesting. I don't know that I've played that one, even though it's familiar sounding. Cotton, we've been playing a lot of Cotton lately. Arabian Fight, Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. Hells yes. And then back to Poyo Poyo. Let's, let's take a look at that. So whenever you start a game, it tells you on the screen, make sure we're focused, that uh, what the buttons do, and then you have your save data. So if you just select first, just starts a new game. And these speakers are nice. Let me see, if you hit select and start, or coin and start, it takes you back. But the one thing that sucks is that within the games, you don't have access to volume or brightness. So that's where donks. I kind of wish you had volume and brightness accessible from that menu. It doesn't make sense that it doesn't. Who the hell is this guy? Tr tricks. Stern. All right, let's just pick this guy. And then if you forget what the buttons do, just hit that coin and start. Attack, jump, magic. Attack, jump, magic. Okay. All the games are still going to be the Japanese versions. Doesn't look like when you change this to English, like you get any uh, different languages supported in the games. Which, for the most part, is going to be fine. Now in this video, I, I just want to test a handful of games. I'm actually going to stream this coming up um, within the next day or so, and we'll be testing out like pretty much every game. But so far, this is pretty damn cool. My camera, I don't know that the uh, the visuals are coming out as nice as they look on this screen, but the viewing angles are really freaking good. The quality of the screen is really nice. Can't can't freaking complain, dude. Give me that. Give me that mantis, that fire-breathing mantis. Okay, we, we had a little bit of that. Let's go ahead and get out of there. Back to main menu. Let's check out Cotton real quick. And then we got we to gotta check out Virtual Fighter. I was really hoping for a lot more surprises on this thing, but the game list isn't overall bad. It's just like, you know, how many Poyo Poyos, how many columns do you need, right? The emulation seems to be done very well. As you see the Astro City bezels that I selected. You could just put black if you want. 
But you know what? Let's, uh, we played this game for a second. Let's back out of it and put on the analog filter. What was that in? Screen settings, analog display. Let's go right back in. I should have made a save state. That's okay. Uh, you know, you know what? Like, I'm not a fan of, of, uh, scan lines, but this actually doesn't look too freaking bad. These scan lines actually look pretty good. Good job. Normally I'm just like, ugh, I don't like the way they look. And I know a lot of systems they'll have like where you can really fine tune things, which is why I think they look bad to begin with is because, you know, they just give you like a base setting and you gotta mess with it. But a lot of times when they have, uh, they've done it themselves and there's no dialing it in, it doesn't, doesn't really do it for me, but this actually doesn't look bad. That's cool. Let's go to uh, Virtual Fighter. We'll be testing the controller when I plug this into the TV in a second. We get direct some direct capture. And we still have the uh, the scan lines on. It really doesn't look bad. I mean, it dims the image a little bit, which is typical, but. This really doesn't look bad. KO, fool. This is a nice freaking little machine. This little, look at this little guy. You biatch. I already forgot what the buttons do, but like you say, you can just hit select and start, double check, punch kick, guard, punch kick. Okay, punch kick, guard, got it. You know what, let me go ahead and make a save state. Let's see how quick, like, okay, let's, let's back out of the game. Let's see how quick the save state loads, if it's instant. Well, not exactly instant, it takes a second to load, but that, that's okay. KO, biatch. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this into some direct capture, see what HDMI looks like with this thing. But so far, I'm digging this thing. It, you, If you plug this into a TV, you could use this as your player one. But then you also have, like if you have these controllers, and I know the Retrobit Sega controllers work on this too, but you have player one, player two. Now, if you plug in player one controller, this could be used as player two. And then if you plug in the controller to player two, this could be player one, the included controller. I, I wouldn't want to play it like that if I had a controller plugged in, but let's go ahead and plug it into a, a monitor and, and check out the HDMI output. Okay, here we go. We got it plugged in through HDMI. Let's go back into Virtual Fighter real quick and take a look at what it you know looks like with scan lines. So it does appear some of these games do take a moment to load. And actually, I just got my ass whooped. That's okay. The scan lines still, like, what I'm looking at on my monitor, they don't look too bad. But let's go ahead and uh, drop that full. Let's back out. Let's go ahead and, and save over that first one. Back out. Turn off the scan lines. Man, you just got that one setting. There's nothing else going on there. Let's jump back into it and see how crispy this looks. Oh, drop them again. This is <laughs> this is looking nice. This looks definitely really nice on a HDMI display. But there we go. We don't want to sit on the Virtual Fighter much longer. Let's go ahead and check out another game real quick. Uh, you know what? Let's let's check out Wonder Boy. Like I said, I'm going to be streaming this, and we'll be just whatever you guys want me to play. I'll be doing probably do a couple streams messing around with this. Oh, what were the buttons? I, f I forgot. Attack and jump. Okay. Stupid snail. Ah, 
Damn it. It's a wonderful game. It looks like it's performing very well. So let's go ahead and get out of that. Check out. Mm, check out something else. Let's do Shadow Dancer, Attack Jump, nin Ninjutsu. Okay. Yeah, you get that, that white screen when the games are loading up. Uh, some games it seems take like an extra second than, you know, other games, but overall it's, it's not too bad. I'm not seeing any like crazy screen tearing or anything on any of these games. So that's, that's pretty much it for now, guys. Like I said, I, I want to do a couple of streams with this, just messing around with the games. I just want to give you guys my first impressions, unbox this thing, take a look at the quality behind it. I mean, it kind of, the, the user interface, when you get into that, it does kind of remind me of like some of the newer Pandora's box clones that are out there. But overall, it's actually not that bad. I mean, I think I'm kind of thinking that more so with all the old logos on the side. But, you know, that's, that's all good. We got a fighting game right here. Let's jump into that real quick. Don't know if this will be hacked. I mean, I always say it, things always get hacked, but when it's in like a limited market, you, you never know like if anybody's really gonna like put in the effort to hack it and then share that hack, you know what I mean? So we'll have to wait and see. Like this is purely a Japanese driven device, just like the Game Gear Minis, the Micros, actually whatever the hell they were called. But this is definitely a hell of a lot cooler than those things in my opinion. I don't know what I'm doing with this game, but this is kind of weird how you're... The sprite scaling? This is interesting. I've never played this one before. I think this might have been one of the others that never got a port out there. Pretty interesting game. So I'll put a link in the description. This is available on Amazon Japan. They do have like shipping restrictions to the US, I believe, uh, through normal shipping, but they use DHL. so you know, private carrier, and they wind up getting you whatever you order within a couple days, typically. Uh, only took me a few days before I got this once they shipped it. So if you're interested, link will be in the description. It's not an affiliate link or anything, but just wanted to share this with you guys. I think it's pretty cool. Still kind of wish, you know, you could change the volume and the brightness on the actual unit within the games. Kind of a few little things that they missed with that. You know, game list is going to be subjective to a lot of people. But overall, I think it's a really neat device. So let me know what you think. Really do appreciate you guys. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom.